Your heart races, breath quickens, and adrenaline floods through your body. Each nerve in you tingles with anticipation as you balance instinct with rationality, not knowing what comes next. What I've just described here is something we understand as fight or flight response, a common reaction to fear. Fear is the next condition al Balkhi discusses in his second half of his manuscript, Sustenance of the Soul, with extreme manifestation of terror. According to al Balkhi, fear arises by either seeing, hearing, or thinking about something that worries an individual. However, something that is fearful but distant and not expected for a while will only cause distress and worry. This means that in order for fear to actually take place, the object or trigger must be perceived by our senses. People respond to fear differently, influenced by their inherent sensitivity to frightening situations. Some may remain unaffected by a sudden or scary encounter, while others may have a reactive disposition to it. When encountering a sudden scare, will leave them stunned and unable to rationalize. al balkhi says that the latter, those who are naturally very reactive, resemble the behavior of most animals such as horses that respond with sudden jerks and darts when fleeing from frightening things that they see or hear. In this case, many techniques like trying to stay calm, rationalize, and receive advice will not work. Their only instinct in this situation is to flee. al balkhi also distinguishes that the most genuine form of fear, the awareness of any impending danger that may cause unbearable pain or death, in order to confront fear, we must understand its nature, its causes, its techniques that will help us respond. al balkhi advises mental maneuvering as a key strategy for this. The first technique he mentions is to realize that fear was created by the threatening expectation is actually much greater than the reality of the experience. Also, meaning that a lack of knowledge of the experience breeds fear and familiarity dispels it and will decrease the reaction. al balkhi gives us the example, for this reason, some of the scholars have likened things that have frightened people to a thick fog in a cold country. And an uninformed person like an Arab Bedouin living in a hot desert would think it to be a solid black object without any outlet that can trap people inside of it. However, when they dare to enter it, find it's just moist air that they can breathe. He explains that many times the reason someone might be scared of something is because they actually don't know the true reality of the experience. That's why in the examples he gives, the man was scared of the ground fog because he was uninformed about it. He didn't know what it was, and when he entered the fog, he realized it was just moist air and breathable. He also explains to us that some people don't even need to experience the frightening situation. They instead learn by observation. Belchi says, however, wiser people may not even need to experience such personal encounters in order to tranquilize their fear. Learning through observation of behavior of those having successfully dealt with fear-evoking situations similar to the ones they expect to face. This tactic is extremely effective, especially if it's coupled with gems from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. One must come to believe that the thing that they fear so much may not be something bad for them, it could actually be something good for them. Allah says, beware to hate something that is good for you and beware to love something that is bad for you. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Further, we learn from a beautiful hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How amazing is the case of the believer. There is good in him for everything. And this is the case with no one else but the believer. If prosperity attends to him, he expresses gratitude to God, and that is good for him. And adversity befalls him, he endures patiently, and that is good for him. This ayah and the hadith work together to show us that even when we're scared of something and perceive it to be bad, in reality it will be good for us. And in addition, that if we are patient with adversity, the potential opportunities for growth and endurance are many. Another effective tip that al balkhi gives us is to appeal to our own pride. We should rebuke ourselves for allowing ourselves to react in such an unpleasant manner. We should tell ourselves that this overreaction is not an action done by someone with a lot of self-esteem and pride, but rather of someone who is cowardly. In fact, he emphasizes that indeed there is no way to fight fear and terror that is more effective than arousing pride and self-importance. So how can we apply this? 
what we can do is to think to ourselves, is this something that the Prophet وسلم, or the righteous before us would do? For example, when we look at the story of the Sahaba during the Battle of Badr, we see that in the night before the battle, the Sahaba became so calm, they fell asleep with ease. We know that this is a result of the Prophet وسلم, making intense dua, but part of the calmness before the storm was a result of them having tawakkul in Allah, that there being no point in being afraid if Allah is with you. The next mental maneuver technique that Al-Balkhi discusses is to convince oneself that this reaction is done by people who are naive or ignorant and don't have any prior experience. This desensitization occurs by the repetition of certain actions. The more times a person goes through a situation, the less they will react to it. For example, Al-Balkhi shares this is why children and animals become quite scared when they face any new situation or hear a loud sound and they respond with terror because they don't really understand if this is dreadful or not. However, when a person or animal experiences the thing that scares them more often, they begin to react not quite as dramatically as the first time. They start to understand the reality of the situation and it's not quite as scary as they thought it to be. So, we can understand that by acquiring knowledge and exposing ourselves to fear-inducing scenarios, we enable ourselves to confront them with more ease and resilience. The last maneuvering technique al Balkhi tells us about is that we must act swiftly when fear strikes. He tells us about the importance of reacting and rationalizing in the right way before the fear takes over. And when that happens, it makes it difficult for the technique to work properly. We also learn this from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, As-sabru anda sadmat al-ula The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in this hadith that the point where patience and actual response is tested is at the point of affliction. We learn from this that when we are struck by calamity or anything that scares us, we need to take action right away. We need to remain calm and patient. We need to rationalize and use mental techniques we talked about in order to take control of our soul before fear takes over. In essence, our journey to confront the fears we interact in our daily lives requires not the understanding of its mechanisms, but the mastering of the techniques that lessen its grip on our minds, bodies, and souls. We know that it's at the moment of affliction that our resolve is truly tested, and we must train ourselves to respond with courage and fortitude to prepare us for these trials whenever they may occur.